Hi and wow, what a day we have in God's Word today. This is day number 326, and our passages are Nehemiah 3 and 4, Isaiah 35, and Philippians 3. In particular, Philippians 3 is very precious to me. So let's turn to Nehemiah 3. After Nehemiah's wonderful prayer for Jerusalem, more than three months went by before the king noticed him looking sad. He says that he had never before looked sad, so he must have waited. God must have been in the timing, because the king wonderfully agreed to help Nehemiah in every way, and the leaders in Jerusalem also were enthusiastic in their acceptance of his proposal to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah 3 This is how the city wall was rebuilt. The high priest Eliashib and his fellow priests rebuilt the sheep gate, dedicated it, and put the gates in place. They dedicated the wall as far as the Tower of the Hundred and the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built the next section. Zakur, son of Imri, built the next section. The clan of Hasinaah built the fish gate. They put the beams and the gates in place and put in the bolts and bars for locking the gate. Meremoth, son of Uriah and grandson of Hakoz, built the next section. Meshulam, the son of Berechiah and grandson of Meshezabel, built the next section. Zadok, son of Baana, built the next section. The men of Tekoa built the next section, but the leading men of the town refused to do the manual labor assigned them by the supervisors. Joida, son of Pasea, and Meshulam, son of Besodea, rebuilt Jeshana Gate. They put the beams and the gates in place and put in the bolts and bars for locking the gate. Melatia from Gibeon, Jadon from Merenoth, and the men of Gibeon and Mizpah built the next section as far as the residence of the governor of west of Euphrates. Uziel, son of Harhaya, a goldsmith, built the next section. Hananiah, a maker of perfumes, built the next section as far as Broad Wall. Rephiah, son of Hur, Ruler of half of the Jerusalem district built the next section. Jediah, son of Harumaf, built the next section, which was near his own house. Hatush, son of Hashabnea, built the next section. Malkijah, son of Harim, and Hashub, son of Pahath Moab, built both the next section and the Tower of the Ovens. Shalom, son of Halohesh, ruler of the other half of the Jerusalem district, built the next section. His daughters helped with the work. Hanun and the inhabitants of the city of Zanoah rebuilt the valley gate. They put the gates in place, put in the bolts and the bars for locking the gate, and repaired the wall for 1,500 feet as far as the rubbish gate. Malkija, son of Rechab, ruler of the Beth Hakerem district, rebuilt the rubbish gate. He put the gates in place and put in the bolts and the bars for locking the gate. Shalom, son of Kolhose, ruler of the Mispah district, rebuilt the fountain gate. He covered the gateway, put the gates in place, and put in the bolts and the bars. At the pool of Shelah, he built the wall next to the royal garden, as far as the stairs leading down from David's city. Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, ruler of half of the Bethzur district, built the next section, as far as David's tomb, the pool, and the barracks. Heading, Levites Who Worked on the Wall The following Levites rebuilt the next several sections of the wall. Rehum, son of Bani, built the next section. Hashabiah, ruler of half of the Kela district, built the next section on behalf of his district. 
Bavai, son of Henadad, ruler of the other half of the Kela district, built the next section. Ezer, son of Jeshua, ruler of Mizpah, built the next section in front of the armory, as far as the place where the wall turns. Baruch, son of Zabai, built the next section, as far as the entrance to the house of the high priest Eliashib. Meremoth, son of Uria and grandson of Hakoz, built the next section, up to the far end of Eliashib's house. Heading Priests who worked on the wall. The following priests rebuilt the next several sections of the wall. Priests from the area around Jerusalem built the next section. Benjamin and Hashub built the next section, which was in front of their houses. Azariah, the son of Maaseah and grandson of Ananiah, built the next section, which was in front of his house. Binui, son of Henadad, built the next section, from Azariah's house to the corner of the wall. Palal, son of Uzai, built the next section, beginning at the corner of the wall and the tower of the upper palace near the court of the guard. Padiah, son of Parosh, built the next section, to a point on the east near the water gate and the tower guarding the temple. This was near the part of the city called Ophel, where the temple workers lived. Heading Other Builders The men of Tekoa built the next section, their second one, from a point opposite the large tower guarding the temple as far as the wall near Ophel. A group of priests built the next section, going north from the horse gate, each one building in front of his own house. Zadok, son of Emer, built the next section, which was in front of his house. Shemaiah, son of Shekaniah, keeper of the east gate, built the next section. Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, built the next section, their second one. Meshulam, son of Berechiah, built the next section, which was in front of his house. Malkijah, a goldsmith, built the next section as far as the building used by the temple workers and the merchants, which was by the Mifkad gate to the temple, near the room on top of the northeast corner of the wall. The goldsmiths and the merchants built the last section from the room at the corner as far as the sheep gate. Nehemiah 4 When Sanballat heard that we Jews had begun rebuilding the wall, he became furious and began to ridicule us. In front of his companions and the Samaritan troops, he said, What do these miserable Jews think they're doing? Do they intend to rebuild the city? Do they think that by offering sacrifices they can finish the work in one day? Can they make building stones out of heaps of burnt rubble? Tobiah was standing there beside him, and he added, What kind of a wall could they ever build? Even a fox could knock it down. I prayed, Hear how they make fun of us, O God. Let their ridicule fall on their own heads. Let them be robbed of everything they have, and let them be taken as prisoners to a foreign land. Don't forgive the evil they do, and don't forget their sins, for they have insulted us who are building. So we went on rebuilding the wall, and soon it was half its full height, because the people were eager to work. Sanballat, Tobiah, and the people of Arabia, Ammon, and Ashdod heard that we were making progress in rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, and that the gaps in the wall were being closed, and they became very angry. So they all plotted together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. But we prayed to our God and kept men on guard against them day and night. The people of Judah had a song they sang. We grow weak carrying burdens. There's so much rubble to take away. How can we build the wall today? Our enemies thought we would not see them or know what was happening, 
until they were already upon us, killing us and putting an end to our work. But time after time, Jews who were living among our enemies came to warn us of the plans our enemies were making against us. So I armed the people with swords, spears, and bows, and stationed them by clans behind the wall, wherever it was still unfinished. I saw that the people were worried, so I said to them and to their leaders and officials, Don't be afraid of our enemies. Remember how great and terrifying the Lord is, and fight for your relatives, your children, your wives, and your homes. Our enemies heard that we had found out what they were plotting, and they realized that God had defeated their plans. Then all of us went back to rebuilding the wall. From then on, half of my men worked and half stood guard, wearing coats of armor and armed with spears, shields, and bows. And our leaders gave their full support to the people who were rebuilding the wall. Even those who carried building materials worked with one hand and kept a weapon in the other, and everyone who was building kept a sword strapped to their waist. The man who was to sound the alarm on the bugle stayed with me. I told the people and their officials and leaders, The work is spread out over such a distance that we are widely separated from one another on the wall. If you hear the bugle, gather around me. Our God will fight for us. So every day, from dawn until the stars came out at night, half of us worked on the wall, while the other half stood guard with spears. During this time, I told the men in charge that they and all their helpers had to stay in Jerusalem at night, so that we could guard the city at night as well as work in the daytime. I didn't take off my clothes even at night, Neither did any of my companions or my servants nor my bodyguards, and we all kept our weapons at hand. And now let's open to Isaiah 35. Yesterday we heard that the land of Edom would become an eternal wasteland and a home for owls and other creatures. The land of Edom is in modern-day Jordan, and Google Maps shows almost nothing green in that whole area. Isaiah 35 Heading The Road of Holiness The desert will rejoice, and flowers will bloom in the wastelands. The desert will sing and shout for joy, It will be as beautiful as the Lebanon mountains and as fertile as the fields of Carmel and Sharon. Everyone will see the Lord's splendor, see his greatness and power. Give strength to hands that are tired and to knees that tremble with weakness. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue coming to punish your enemies. The blind will be able to see, and the deaf will hear. The lame will leap and dance, and those who cannot speak will shout for joy. Streams of water will flow through the desert. The burning sand will become a lake, and dry land will be filled with springs. Where jackals used to live, marsh grass and reeds will grow. There will be a highway there called the Road of Holiness. No sinner will ever travel that road. No fools will mislead those who follow it. No lions will be there. No fierce animals will pass that way. Those whom the Lord has rescued will travel home by that road. They will reach Jerusalem with gladness, singing and shouting for joy. They will be happy forever, forever free from sorrow and grief. 
Let's turn now to Philippians 3. Yesterday we heard Paul's wonderful poem of praise about Christ's humility and subsequent exaltation to the highest place. And we heard this promise, God is always at work in you to make you willing and able to obey his purpose. Philippians 3 In conclusion, my friends, be joyful in your union with the Lord. I don't mind repeating what I've written before, and it will be safer if I do. Watch out for those who do evil things, those dogs, those who insist on cutting the body. It is we, not they, who have received the true circumcision, for we worship God by means of His Spirit and rejoice in our life in union with Christ Jesus. We do not put any trust in external ceremonies. I could, of course, put my trust in such things. If any of you think you can trust in external ceremonies, I have even more reason to feel that way. I was circumcised when I was a week old. I am an Israelite by birth of the tribe of Benjamin, a pure-blooded Hebrew, As far as keeping the Jewish law is concerned, I was a Pharisee, and I was so zealous that I persecuted the church. As far as a person can be righteous by obeying the commands of the law, I was without fault. But all those things that I might count as profit, I now reckon as loss for Christ's sake. Not only those things... I reckon everything as complete loss for the sake of what is so much more valuable, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have thrown everything away. I consider it all as mere garbage so that I may gain Christ, and I just want to remain joined as one with him. The way I'm made right before God is not based on my efforts to obey the law. Instead, I'm made right in God's sight only because of Christ. I fully believe in what Christ has done, and through that belief alone I am made right in God's sight. All I want is to know Christ and to experience the power of His resurrection to share in his sufferings and become like him in his death, in the hope that I myself will be raised from death. I do not claim that I have already succeeded or have already become perfect. I keep striving to win the prize for which Christ Jesus has already won me to himself. Of course, my friends, I really don't think that I have already won it. The one thing I do, however, is to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So I run straight toward the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Christ Jesus to the life above. All of us who are spiritually mature should have this same attitude. But if some of you have a different attitude, God will make this clear to you. However that may be, let us go forward according to the same rules we have followed until now. Keep on imitating me, my friends. Pay close attention to those who follow the right example that we have set for you. I have told you many times before, and now I repeat it in tears. There are many whose lives make them enemies of Christ's death on the cross. They are going to end up in hell because their God is their bodily desires. They are proud of what they should be ashamed of, and they think only of things that belong to this world. We, however, are citizens of heaven, and we eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Christ Jesus, 
to come from heaven. He will change our weak, mortal bodies and make them like his own glorious body, using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his rule. Please join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are the blind who now see. We're the deaf who now hear. We're the lame who now leap and dance. We're the dumb who now can speak. You have brought streams in our desert. You provided a highway, and it leads to the life above. We are no longer citizens of this world, but citizens of heaven. So let us forget what lies behind, especially sinful thoughts or pridefully trusting in ourselves. Let us lengthen our stride as we run straight for the goal. And may we sing this song. All I once held dear, built my life upon. All this world reveres and wars to own. All I once thought gain, I have counted loss, spent and worthless now compared to this. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy and righteousness, and I love you, Lord. Now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you and known as yours, to possess by faith what I could not earn, all-surpassing gift of righteousness. Oh, to know the power of your risen life and to know you in your sufferings, to become like you in your death, my Lord, so with you to live and never die. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best. You're my joy and righteousness, and I love you, Lord.